In a perfectly still and crystal clear pool of water, we can see everything with clarity. The heart at complete rest is still. When the heart is still, wisdom appears easily, fluently. When wisdom flows, clear understanding follows. Spontaneous Awareness Months passed by as Mechi Gao's life settled into a quiet and steady passage centered on the rigors of intensive meditation. Retiring to the seclusion of her hut shortly after the morning meal, she spent the morning hours pacing her meditation path from end to end. The meditation path had become a sacred battleground for Mechi Gao in her struggle to vanquish the cycle of birth and death. She paced its length with an inward focus so complete that she was unaware of her body's position or of her bare feet touching the earth. Her awareness was so internalized that occasionally her body veered off the walking surface and into the undergrowth. Without losing concentration, she instinctively steered herself back to the path and resumed walking, her attention resolutely fixed on the flowing current of consciousness. The path was shaded by a leafy canopy of towering hardwoods and arching bamboo. At one end stood a tall and slender payom tree, under whose shade Mechi Gao had built a rustic bamboo platform where she could rest and meditate during the hot midday hours. The payom tree, a variety of rainforest mahogany, had become one of her favorite spots. The payom was a steely and compact wood that was admired for its bright yellow blossoms which dotted the green foliage during seasonal bursts and littered her small meditation platform with its falling petals. Combining hardness and beauty, the payom was indicative of the toughness and splendor that characterized Machi Gao's present state of mind. Late one evening, Machi Gao had a vision. The vista of a spacious pool filled with golden lotus blossoms stretched before her mind's eye. The floating blossoms were as big as ox cart wheels, their thin, fine gold petals flaring like feathery spokes. Other lotus flowers, their petals closed around the stem and pointing skyward, stood tall above the azure water like gold-domed temples. Others were submerged just below the surface of the clear, cool water, their radiance rippling across the pool like a golden breeze. The water appeared so magically transparent that the soft, undulating mud on the bottom was clearly visible. Detached from their stems, some of the petals floated on the surface, wet and sparkling, their delicate fragrance permeating the air in all directions. As Manchi Gao watched in quiet awe, a small golden duck glided down from the sky, skimmed across the placid surface, and began swimming playfully among the lotus blossoms. It pecked at the floating petals, gracefully circling each petal as it ate. After consuming four petals, it stopped satisfied, and remained perfectly still. Watching, fascinated from the edge of the lotus pond, Miachi Gao felt her body lift and float like a cloud over the water. As she approached the golden duck, she felt her legs spread to straddle its back, but as she mounted, she merged completely with it. At that instant, she realized that she herself was the golden duck. Immediately, she withdrew from Samadhi meditation and returned to normal consciousness. Mechi Gao thought about this mystical vision for days, searching for its essential meaning. A gold duck eating golden lotus blossoms. Lotus flowers symbolize offerings in homage to the Tamma, the essence of the Buddha's noble path. Gold stands for light, the light of the mind. The flower represents the blossoming or opening up of the mind's radiant light. She understood that the four lotus petals were the four Aryamagga, the four milestones on the noble path to Arahantship. Like the golden duck, Manchi Gao radiated the clear, luminous light of understanding, knowledge that in this lifetime she would surely complete her journey along that noble path. Mechi Gao knew that consciousness pervaded all moments of awareness, regardless of whether attention was focused internally or externally. Nothing she experienced ever stood outside consciousness, since all phenomena were grasped, conceived, 
and experienced only on that basis, they had no independent existence separate from the conscious mind. For that reason, awareness of the body was inherently a function of consciousness. In essence, she was investigating an internalized bodily form, a mental picture of the body based on sensation. Consciousness spread out naturally through the entire body, animating the sense spheres and activating sensory awareness. The experience of embodiment, of body as self, was comprised chiefly of mental images shaped in conjunction with sensory awareness of her body and colored by a deep-rooted attachment to form and personal identity. With a sense of spontaneity and detachment, Machi Gao focused on the body as a mental construct, as a product of the conscious mind. If the physical body was merely a conglomeration of elements, temporarily lumped together, where did the sense of embodiment come from? And what initiated thoughts of ugliness, or emotions of revulsion, in response to the natural process of bodily decay and disintegration? As she focused on internalized images of the body's dissolution, Manchi Gao paid particular attention to the accompanying thoughts and emotions that defined their appearance as either agreeable or disagreeable. Becoming a detached and unbiased witness, she gave the discriminating mind free reign to first conceptualize and then react to its interpretations. She knew her body only through feedback from the senses combined with the mind's conceptual activity. But she then experienced those sensual concepts as being either positive and good or negative and bad. She needed to understand why the mind created those images and how the mind suffused them with meaning. At this stage, Manchi Gao began to focus exclusively on the emotional responses evoked by body contemplation. She had become adept at interrupting the mind's conscious momentum and reversing its normal course back to the source. So, she started to use the same technique to reverse the flood of thought and emotion and retrace its course to the point of origin. She concentrated on an image of advanced bodily decay, absorbing it all at once without conceptualization. With spontaneous awareness and specific perception functioning together, she noticed an instinctive surge of revulsion push its way out from deep inside her to permeate the image. She held the image in her awareness until object and observer became one. At that moment, image and emotion gradually contracted and drew inward until both were fully absorbed by the conscious mind. Then they simply vanished. Quickly, she refocused on the mental image and its attached sense of revulsion and again watched as the flow of mental perception, infusing the image with emotional impact, reverted to its source, merging with the center of consciousness and then disappearing. The more she focused in that way, the more spontaneous the reversal of image and emotion became. Eventually, on their own, without prompting, Images and emotions receded into the mind, returning to their original source where they vanished immediately. Mechi Gao's meditation had reached a decisive phase in body contemplation, a turning point in which the root cause of the mind's attachment to bodily form was seen in stark clarity. As instinctive feelings of revulsion reunited with their primary cause, a profound realization suddenly occurred. The mind itself produced feelings of revulsion and attraction. The mind alone created perceptions of ugliness and beauty. Those qualities did not actually exist in the objects of perception. The mind projected those attributes onto the images it perceived and then deceived itself into believing that the objects themselves were beautiful and attractive or ugly and repulsive. In truth, the flow of consciousness was consistently steeped in a proliferation of mental imagery and attending emotion. Her mind painted elaborate pictures all the time, pictures of herself and pictures of the external world. It then fell for its own mental imagery, believing it to be substantially real. At that stage, the infinite, space-like awareness of mind essence and the particularity of conscious perception were operating simultaneously. Gradually, the illusion of cohesive mental images began to break down as well. Within the flowing current of consciousness, myriad amorphous forms and fragmentary shapes arose, coalesced into images, and then broke apart immediately, only to regroup and disband time and time again. No sooner did an image of the body appear than it vanished immediately. 
before a particular desire or expression could fully formulate, the source of awareness simply enveloped it, causing it to dissolve into emptiness and disappear. Countless potential ways in which body and mind could express themselves seem to arise in random succession, only to dissolve into emptiness one after another. Habitual concepts of bodily existence expressed a desire to take form and declare their individual characteristics, but the knowing essence dissolves them all before they could establish a definite presence in the mind. Rising and passing images happen so quickly that concepts of external and internal were no longer relevant. In the end, forms flickered on and off, appearing and disappearing from consciousness in such rapid succession that their meaning was no longer discernible. After each disappearance, awareness experienced profound emptiness, emptiness of imagery and emptiness of attachment to form. An extremely refined essence of pure knowing stood out within the mind. As each new image flashed and vanished, the mind felt the resulting emptiness more profoundly. From that point on, Manchi Gao's mind was wondrously empty and clear. Even though the body remained, her awareness was empty. No image of any sort remained within the mind. This insight occasioned a momentous revolution of Manchi Gao's entire being. She understood the truth with absolute certainty. Delusion about imagery produced by the flow of consciousness leads to feelings of repulsion and attraction. She realized that both were rooted in a deeply instinctive but almost subliminal distortion of conscious perceptions of body and form. When the real basis of those perceptions was exposed, completely undermining their validity, the external world of appearances collapsed and her attachment to it ceased of its own accord. With the cessation of all images created by the mind, came the cessation of attachment to form. Once her mind had withdrawn completely from all sensual involvement, a feeling of profound serenity enveloped her entire mental being. Finally, for Mei Chi Gao, bodily images, even as bare forms, no longer existed within her mind's conscious framework. Since no shapes or forms remained in the mind to be grasped, Mechi Gao knew she could never be reborn in the realms of form again. The mind's usual sense of physical limitation and embodiment completely disappeared. She felt her being dissolve, expand outward, and merge with all things, as though forming one essence with the universe, resting within, unfettered by any dependency, was a supreme emptiness. Clear. Bright and still.